What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna replace this waste board, throw a fresh one on there, and then I'm gonna go over all the hold down methods I prefer, and then show you guys some other methods I don't prefer. So there's a few reasons I'm replacing this waste board. I could probably get a couple more surfaces out of it, but I wanna change up this fence system that I have out of PVC pipes. And then also when I put the new spindle mount on there, it kind of shifted everything forward like an inch and a half. So the machine can actually carve further than this stops. So I'm just gonna, if I gotta take it off, I might as well just replace them. So we're just gonna replace them and then go over a bunch of clamping methods. So now I'm gonna figure out the actual cut area of the machine. So I just have a regular V-bit on here, nothing special, just anything with the point. So just mark that roughly, doesn't gotta be perfect. Then I'm just gonna do that all the way around and make a square to show my actual cut area and how far the spindle can actually go. I already have the back three segments marked as I'm just replacing my waste board and just changing the front of it. But if yours is brand new, I would just mark all four sides with the pencil. I do have a more in-depth video on all this. So I'll add that link up in the corner if you wanna check that one out and in the description. So we're gonna kinda of just zoom past this part. Now to cut my strips, I got this half sheet from Home Depot for like 30 bucks. You can have the big box store cut these for you, but I can't promise to do a good job. So I added this little groove to sit on top of the T-Tracks and I'm gonna add it with my fancy joiner. You may not have this feature on your joiner or even own a joiner, so if you don't have this, I would just use a rabbit bit. I'll add a link to a rabbit bit down in the description and all you need is a handheld router of any kind. So why waste your time notching these out? You by no means have to notch these out, but if you do go with the T-Track system, I'd recommend it. Because if you don't, when you clamp a bunch of stuff down, you sometimes put a bunch of force on these. And when this pushes down, it pulls up the T-Track. And when you notch it out and screw these down, it's just that much more holding these things down and secure to the waste board. You also want the screws to go in as deep as possible so you can get as many surfaces out of these as you can. I think I surfaced the last one three or four times and I probably could have got two more before the screws would have been starting to be an issue. I'd recommend leaving at least a quarter inch of MDF so the screws actually have something to hold on to. All right, on to the next step. All my sheets are attached, everything's moved forward where it needs to be. Now, hear me out. The next step, you do not have to do this but I would strongly recommend you do so. We're gonna flatten the waste board. On my first CNC, I pretty much never flattened the waste board. I don't even know if I ever did. But let me tell you, it makes a huge difference. If you're cutting like V-bit type stuff, it just, you'll notice inconsistencies, especially over a large area. If you're cutting small pieces like this all the time, you'll probably never notice a difference unless you cut one here and cut one way in the back corner. So starting out, you don't have to do it, but for here, I'd recommend it. I do sell a file bundle so you can, it'll make this a little easier. I do not offer G-code, but when you're flattening your waste board and starting out your machine, you need to learn how to do this. This is crucial and flattening the waste board, flattening the waste board is one of the easiest things you're gonna do on your machine. So flatten your waste board. Don't have to, but you really should. I use this cheap bit I got on Amazon. It's just a flattening bit. I think it's like, one inch, I'll post a link in the description. Uh, it's just like two little replacement blades, you can rotate them and it's all I use it for is flattening, but it works great. And I typically, when I do my first surfacing, I'll do 0 0.03. And then that usually gets me pretty close. You may have to do it one more time with a tiny little pass, but usually that gets me pretty bit. Depends how cupped and dipped your entire wasteboard is. But you can go pretty fast. You're only taking 0 0.03. So another thing I see people doing wrong when they do their waste board is they have their spindle or router speed set way too high. I never go over four on the Makita. I never go over 16,000 RPMs on this guy. So set that thing at like two and just let it cut. I'll probably put this at like 12,000 RPMs. I'm just gonna guess, I'm not gonna actually figure it out. But you don't want that thing, if you're getting burn marks and stuff, it's spinning way too fast. 
Now we're gonna look for flat spots. You kinda want it to have this little bit of lip the whole entire way. If you have flat spots, you'll have to run it again with the shallow pass. Now I had no flat spots, but I didn't quite cut all the way back to the end as my sheets were a little long. So I just cleaned those up with the old hand plane. Now for whatever reason, I joined all vectors when I was cutting my wasteboard lines and it should have just cut lines, but instead because I joined them, it cut a bunch of squares and it took 30 minutes when it should have took 20 minutes. Now we're going to add the PVC wasteboard. I'll add these files to my current wasteboard bundle. I just used an eighth inch up cut, but all you need to do is put a calipers on a one inch piece of PVC pipe and just cut those marks on your board. And these things were tight. I had to pound them in and pull them out with the pliers, but they did go in and out, and I made them a little bit larger in the next file. So we officially have the PVC fence on here, and I stole this idea from Bronewood. Go follow Bronewood. Nick is the CNC cutting board inlay master. And I, I steal a lot of my ideas from him, so follow him. But I love the PVC fence idea because it's so simple, and if you hit these with the bit, who cares, not a big deal. You can buy a whole chunk of PVC for pretty cheap. And this is just one inch PVC and I cut it into like inch and a quarter chunks. Another question I got asked about this is how do you know it's square? The PVC fence will be square because you designed it in your software. If you're soft, if it's square in your software, it's gonna cut square, especially on the CNC. And it also lines up perfect with the grid I put on here. So now let's go over some clamping ideas and show you what I like and don't like about certain methods. Now Jess engraves a lot of these noodle boards, so I'm gonna add a little easier system for her and just add a couple more of these PVC pipes so it can use like a friction system. And I'm just gonna jump in my software and add my measurements so they line up where I need them and then just push play. I'll probably add these in a few more spots. I just gotta figure out where exactly I want them. And here's the friction setup I was talking about. It's just essentially two wedges that you pound together and it just makes this super tight. Then throw a safety block over here for good measure and she's good to go. So obviously, as you can see now, the T-Track is my preferred method. When it comes to this kind of stuff, I'm very simplistic. I don't like complexity. I just, as simple as possible, stupid, simple, easy or something they say, but that's, that's how I operate. I don't like overly complicated things. If I have to replace these, I can just cut a new piece on the table saw, plop it in here, and it, it'll literally take me minutes. It'll take me longer to surface it and put the grid on than to actually replace the board itself. When I first started out, I had an X-carve, and the X-carve came, came with the threaded insert style base. And at first, I really liked that, but once I switched over to this just to try it, I, I'm not a fan of the threaded inserts. And if you need to make a new wasteboard, adding all them threaded inserts every time is just a pain. And I just wasn't a big fan of screwing everything into the threaded inserts for every single project. So if you're just first setting up your machine, I would honestly recommend trying both worlds. Maybe try the T-Tracks and then add some threaded inserts throughout your wasteboard and see what you like. And then maybe on your next wasteboard, you can switch over to threaded inserts or a combination of both, whatever kind of tricks your trigger. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys my favorite and most used method, and it's the double-sided tape method. But I don't actually use double-sided tape. I'm just not a big fan of the double-sided tape. I've had more failures with the double-sided tape than the method I use. But it's essentially the same thing, it's just poor man's double-sided tape is what I call it. I use masking tape. You can get like three rolls of this for like 10 bucks and it lasts me forever. And then your uh, super glue of choice, this is my go-to. Type on everything for me, that's my adhesive. I stick to it. And I've literally had this fail me like three times ever. And reasons this will fail you is A, is if your piece has some twist or rock to it, that'll just make a not secure bond. Another method is if your piece is dusty, your wasteboard's dusty, or if your wasteboard is super chewed up. If there's a bunch of cut lines in it, it's just, it's hard for the tape to stick. And I actually just had something break free, which is why I went ahead and replaced the wasteboard. That's kind of when you know it's time, is when stuff starts messing up. I was cutting a layered mallet with a giant upcut bit, and it picked up the piece and broke free, and yeah, no good. 
but we're gonna make a new one here. Just a simple one out of poplar. And I'm gonna use this massive half inch bit for clearing, just to show you guys how well this actually holds. Whenever I start a piece or a new project, I mark my center, because I zero out of the center, it's just what I prefer. And I always put the calipers on it and get the thickness and write it right on there. Okay, make sure you have it nice, nice and stuck to the surface. Put your piece right on there. If I was cutting something more dense, I would use another strip here, but this poplar is not very, very dense. Okay, make sure your piece is completely flat, no rock to it. Give it a nice quick flip. And then when I flip it, I move it around and spread that glue. No activator, don't need it. This works just fine. I'll let that sit for about a minute and we're ready to cut. together and we have one of these. So this is the mallet all glued up. I still gotta like sand it and shape it a little bit, but I put a little Easter egg in this video. If you find Manny, I'll put him right here. Hit it in the video, I'll send this to one, the first person who finds it and puts the timestamp in the comments. Uh, US only, shipping overseas is too expensive. But yeah, find it, she's yours. This is the finished one. I also made this bowl yesterday on the CNC, 3D carved, two-sided. So if you're interested in these kind of videos, let me know and I'll show you guys how I make this kind of stuff. Now for the screw method. It's a little down and dirty, but it gets the job done. One thing you gotta avoid is blowing out corners, but it'll still work. It boogers up your wasteboard a little bit, but it's quick, it's fast, and I haven't had it fail yet. We cut a lot of mallets and I just cut the blanks a couple inches long and I very rarely have any issues hitting them. And this piece was a little warped, so it didn't cut all the way through on the edges, but I'll show you how I deal with that later. And just like that, on to the next job. When you remove the screws, it leaves these little mounds. I just take a sharp, stiff putty knife, and it just scrapes them right off so it's flush again. Now to deal with tabs and the areas that are cut through, I just use an oscillating tool with the fine end on it, and it zips right through that little bit of wood. All right, so this is just a mock-up board. Then I just have a random assortment of little fences that just slide in the T-tracks. There we go. Look at, I mean, just like that, it's super tight. Then I'll just do something like this. Nothing ain't going nowhere. If you watch my CNC inlay videos, that's just, this is pretty much how I do all my cutting boards. Just kind of lock them in place and they're not going anywhere. There's also systems out there that are like vacuum beds. And I've personally never used one, but I've talked to people that have them on like professional size machines. And the amount of power they suck is unreal. In like a 4 bay machine, the vacuum system sucking 60 amps alone, if not more. So for a hobby CNC, in my opinion, I just think it's kind of just a lot of work and overkill. And I think you'd be a little let down if you actually used or built one. For something like small like this, it, it just wouldn't have enough force to hold that thing down. So unless you're doing solely sheet goods, I just think it's quite overkill and a lot of just time and investment to do it. Um, but again, to each their own, if that's what you want and makes you happy, by all means build or make a system. There's also the cam style clamp, which you turn and it tightens into your workpiece. I'm personally not a fan of them. Uh, I used them before and they kind of just wiggle free and it's just not something for me. You can find files for them on Etsy. I think I went over most. There's the regular hold downs, which I would use out of wood if you make your own. The cam clamps, which I'm not a fan of, but they do work for some people. The double-sided tape, which is my favorite. The screws mess up your waste board a little bit, but they do work good and I've never had one fail. Um, there's also the brad nails. You can use brad nails to hold your work pieces down. I've tried that. I'm not really a fan of that either because it sticks in your piece. 
and they, I feel like it messes up the wasteboard more than the screws do. I think that's really it. I just like a simple, simplistic combination of fences. The PVC pipes, I'll add a few more around the wasteboard just as I use it. The wooden simple fences with the T-tracks. You can also get, you can buy like T-track stops that are like machined and made up like aluminum, but these pieces of scrap with holes drilled in them are good enough for me. If you have other things I missed or didn't see, put them down in the comments, I'd love to see them. And it might also help somebody else when they're making their decision. Again, these are all my opinions on like what I feel works and doesn't. So I highly recommend you try a couple different things. It depends on the individual and what you're cutting and doing. If I was cutting big sheet goods all the time, I probably wouldn't just use a bunch of double-sided tape because it would just be a ton of waste. Look on Etsy. Etsy has a ton of different like files you can buy for different clamping things. There's also a few other videos on YouTube that have other clamping methods, but I haven't seen anything out there that's like super crazy that I haven't tried. There's a few type of hold downs that I haven't tried. I'll also tag like Ben Meyer's video, uh, Infinity and Morgan put out that video on his wasteboard style. That one looks pretty cool. All right, that's the end of the video, guys. If you have any recommendations for me, let me know down in the comments on future videos or other kind of clamping methods I should try. And yeah, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.